Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Meet. This podcast was born out of a pitch for the newspaper, specifically the Paisano, UTSA's independent student newspaper. Meet is a podcast living in the realm of conversation and a show that crosses disciplines. I do hope you enjoy it. In this episode, I sat down with Zach Beasley, the president of Roadrunner Gaming. Roadrunner Gaming is UTSA's club for gaming enthusiasts and competitive players alike. Um, and then they went ahead and formed Roadrunner Gaming. And about that time, our faculty advisor, Brent, was also uh, here on campus. I think he was um, a fresh hire about 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Um, but yeah, it was it, uh, it started 2011, 2012 with 11 StarCraft players. Gotcha. So Brent Floyd, that's his last mm-hmm. name. He's still the faculty advisor? He still is. Yes, sir. So you said about 2011, 2012, um, and uh, kind of 11 StarCraft players. You know, esports is... I guess to some people, you know, some people would argue that it's, you know, maybe not a sport. Some people will say that it, you know, is a viable sport. You know, it could be argued that it's kind of changing the ways, so to speak, how, um, uh, you know, certain events are held for it and stuff like that. And there was a, a Halo event, um, a couple, uh, I don't know the date specifically, but more recently here in San Antonio. Um, mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how um, esports you think is kind of changing the, the narrative behind uh, um, gaming, if at all? Yeah, so just esports in general, cha- uh, changing how sports are in total, and just video gaming at all. Yeah. So esports to me is kind of allowing um, these people, and especially these younger people, um, because I don't know if you know, but a lot of these like competitive esport teams, like League of Legends, especially Rocket League, like they have younger people playing for them. Like the earliest that they can play is about 16 years old. So that's, you know, people in high school that are allowed to competitively compete. And of course they have like high school football or high school soccer and things like that. But like they're allowing these 16 year olds or 17 year olds to compete on like a global scale, like in, in the league with the pros. And I think it's providing opportunities for these kids, you know, especially with COVID and the, the lockdown, everybody spent a lot of time at home. And for a lot of these people too, um, they were kind of sat at home, just playing video games, honing their skills, just naturally playing with their friends online. And the great, the beauty of video games is that a lot of things can happen online in the first place. So they don't have to have matches held um, in certain locations of the world or the United States all the time. They can have it like the quarterfinals or the semifinals, um, maybe even the finals of just from the comfort of their own home, which is entirely revolutionary in the terms of any kind of sports, because most things aren't allowed to be played at home or just kind of in the comfort of their own room. As much as that, they have to go out and, um, They have to like physically go out somewhere and, you know, play or do whatever, if that. Um, But for video games, it's also kind of giving like, I don't want to say like patriotism, but like a sense of like community. They can get behind the team, you know, kind of like. Uh, for example, like my dad's favorite football team is the the, Cal- the Dallas Cowboys, right? So him and a lot of his buddies like get together and like are excited about back in the Cowboys for another year, you know, like we and boys or whatever. Um, but like for us, you know, for us gamers, like all of us like watch Envy Gaming or Team Liquid or FaZe Clan or Space Station. And we can, it's kind of like these teams that we can back. And it still at that point creates another community that all of us are like super excited to be a part of just like anybody watching their favorite football team or watching their favorite baseball team. This is a two part question. What does the gaming? Well, actually, let me, before I get to that one, I'm going to, I would just, can you define um, I'm familiar with what it is, but define for those who aren't familiar with the term esports, what does that, what does that term uh, mean? Uh, which term was it? Esports. Esports. Uh, so esports, or I think it's called electronic sports, um, is the terminology that is used for competitive video games. Essentially, um, it's the terminology that's used in the same uh, same sense as like NFL or um, NBA and anything like that, which is just traditional sports. It encompasses a bunch of actual video games that hold uh, a competitive league, allowing teams to compete for a title or trophy or prize um, on a video 
video game uh, environment. Kind of feeding off of that, what would you say the gaming, the general, excuse me, the general gaming culture looks like on UTSA's campus? And what would you say the competitive scene looks like? Like the kind of differences between the two. So uh, on UTSA, there, and I, and I know that there is, um, there's a lot of like unsung heroes in the casual. Um, I like to call them unsung heroes. A lot of people that like go home and just sit at their computer and play games when they have downtime or are sitting in the Tejas lounge or the roost and they're playing uh, Smash Bros or Guitar Hero, uh, FIFA, NF or not NFL, uh, Madden, anything like that. They're finding time to sit down and just play some video games with their friends. I would say that to me, it's a lot larger than people like to admit, um, especially on casual, uh, the, the casual side. A lot of people like even just playing like a, a, like a phone game, that's casual gaming to me. Like you're sitting there just playing a little game on your phone or whatever, you know, like doodle jump or something. And that's casual gaming to me. And a lot of people don't really understand that and don't really see that as kind of like a casual gaming scene. And then they kind of get to this point where like, we they can come to run our gaming and see us. And they're like, Oh, well, these four other people also play that same exact like phone game that I play. It's like, so for me, like seeing as a casual community, I see them as like, okay, well, all these people are playing the same little game that they are. That's an easy way to make friends, especially when there's so many of them on campus that they don't even know about because it kind of gives an avenue for people to talk, you know, and that, and a lot of people are, you know, a little scared to just walk up to somebody and be like, Oh, do you, do you play this game or whatever? It's kind of like a safe community that they can do it for, uh, for the competitive side of it. There's also a lot of like hidden away heroes in that too. A lot of people, um, of course, they spend their time doing their homework or uh, spending their time doing other extracurricular activities. But like late at night when it hits like 10 or 9 p.m. and they start playing competitively, they get their friends together and they start kind of like locking in and getting ready to go. They, I mean, they start going, especially for Smash, uh, Smash Bros. Ultimate. There is a huge community based around that in San Antonio. Uh, a lot of like gaming cafes or PC cafes that these people like go to to play uh, just like LAN tournaments, just play together for like, you know, a small prize, $50, $100, nothing crazy. But, you know, the fact that they're still going and competing, they're still competitively playing. And then that turns into, you know, like all of these people that are playing Call of Duty competitively, like, it kind of surprises me and it surprises a lot of my officers too is like if you just ask you'll be surprised how many people say yeah i, I do that competitively like or yeah i'm like down to like start a team because i think my skills can provide an avenue to make this team go far i think i would say maybe just in general all of the all of the gaming community whether it be casual or competitive can kind of be seen as underground like it's kind of hidden away and honestly for me the point of that is to really bring it out because i know they're out there i know they are um how many officers uh does our this sort of thing have i have seven i have seven officers so me um i'm the president jasper my vice president uh, Matias, my general manager or secretary. Uh, CZ, my treasurer. I've got two events coordinators, um, Jacques and Riley. And then, of course, um, Macy, who is my social media design officer, who's here with me right now. Awesome. Uh, I, I know I mentioned uh, earlier the the kind of Halo event of the Tech, uh, I believe it's called the Techport Center. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, ForceCon at Techport. Yeah. Yes. Um, how important would you say it is to have a, a dedicated space in San Antonio to for the to, to be able to hold esports events? It is huge. Um, it, it is honestly one of the biggest things that I've pushed for since being here is having even just like not on campus, but like even in San Antonio, having a place to play is important, you know, because not everybody can afford a like two thousand dollar computer to play you know all these games together or like stream or you know do this that and the other but like places like techport or shenanigans or other cyber cafes like allowing these like membership opportunities where they pay like 15 20 a month to come play on like decent or very well-made computers is almost entirely essential i would almost say it's critical for communities like this because some people can have you know like 
I don't want to say mid, but like, you know, lower end to like mid end kind of computer and then still have trouble running some of these next gen games. But that's when like Techport and other like um, cyber cafes come in because they already have a good uh, relationship with like EK Fluid or MSI, like these companies that provide computers uh, just for free even sometimes. And like, then it's just like 15, 20 bucks a month to come play as much as you want. All you have to do is drive over there and you can, you have, you know, like the world at your fingertips right there. I would, yeah, I would say like having a place to play land center, anything like that is critical. The, so like we'll take the halo event for an example, like, is there any type of like funding from the university that covers that kind of stuff or is that down um, to the, the organization or the, the players themselves? Uh, yeah, most of most of the funding comes from just within ourselves. Um, we rely a lot on like Best Fest and like the annual uh, Halloween party that we host. Um, it's usually used for, you know, recruitment and then just, just a small fundraiser. But other than that, it's all like internally funded. There's there's not really much that we can get from the school. You know, it is what it is. That's just how it is. But yeah, most things are internally funded, especially, I mean, that includes like jerseys, uh, tournament fees, travel, if we have to, all of that is within ourselves. How well did the, just out of, I mean, uh, 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 Halo's, uh, you know, it's one of the games I play with my buddies a lot. How, how uh, just out of curiosity, um, how well did the uh, that team do with that event? They, at the team, uh, so they did actually really well. They, it's, it was either quarter or semifinals and they put up a fight what was that Quarter. quarterfinals uh they made it to the quarterfinals and they put up a fight against an ex uh, professional team mm-hmm. um and i think it was like it, it was whatever the term is like either two to one three to two four to three it, it was like um a tie break around that they had lost in they they had almost gone through uh the ex-professional team which was incredible it was such it was a nail biter to watch it was incredible how would you say this uh that how would you say that roadrunner gaming is kind of um, making gaming a more kind of accessible, um, inclusive space. I know a lot of people kind of, you know, will, will cert, uh, apply certain kind of misconceptions on, on, um, on gamers, or even again, the kind of, uh, the idea of, of it being, um, like a viable sport. How would you say this organization's maybe kind of changing those, those stereotypes? Yeah. So I would say, uh, for us, especially, uh, one of the things, I mean, and this isn't even just like for Roadrunner Gaming. I'm also um, a student leader in Sosa, the Spirit of San Antonio, the marching band. Um, One of the like ideologies that I carry with me, like being in a leadership position is just like, it's very community driven. It's all about like the actual people that are within the community, within the discord, within the, the rowdy link. It's all about those people that show up and show out. So for us, it's like kind of starting these little, uh, do you know what you know what Jackbox party games are? It's like a little like party game thing or just little card games or like smash events. Um, we have a current what's it called a collaboration with the Roost right now. Um, I don't know if you've seen that. It's the Smash tournament. Um, it like one of the things that we really put out is that like it doesn't like there is no discrimination or anything you come here you find a safe place in roadrunner gaming regardless of whether or not you just play a little phone game or you competitively compete in halo at ForceCon in LAN events regardless of that same term like you together are part of the same community and we really push that forward at least that's what i would say uh, do you have anything to add on that just great opportunities yeah, she uh, she had said it creates opportunities, and that's very true. Uh, it creates plenty of opportunities for people uh, within the, the organization to, you know, give back to San Antonio or give back to UTSA in general, provide, you know, a fun time that they can go meet friends. That's all. I know that for a lot of people, especially coming out of uh, the COVID era, I think it's just kind of like, I don't want to say like a personality trait because that's not very true, but, you know, I I definitely felt it when we were locked away for so long. It was an adjustment to come back to reality, essentially come back to society in the first place and like talk to all these people and like, like see people around me again. It was like, it was an adjustment. And I think we're really trying to act as a catalyst for those kind of people that are, you know, maybe within their shell and don't really know where to go, but like, Oh, you play games. Well, come hang out with us. Let me show you all these great people that you can come meet and see and talk to, and you can play fun games while you're at it and not have to worry about it. It's really a fun, safe, inclusive space that I've really pushed to try and create. 
Talk a little bit about the significance of Discord when it comes to like a um, kind of gathering people in one place. And then, you know, I guess maybe if you can, like just briefly define what Discord is and then the significance of it to specifically to this organization and, and kind of the, the purpose that it serves. Yeah, of course. So uh, the best way that I can kind of explain what Discord is, is it's a an information hub, um, almost similar to like GroupMe or just like a group text message, but for um, like on a massive scale. Um, it's essentially a, a place where information is traded between, excuse me, traded between gamers and whatnot. Um, so the reason as to why it is very esports or gamer like engineered, it's just, uh, there's a lot of colors. There's a lot of, um, it actually tells you like what game you're playing when you're playing a game on Discord. I'm sure you've seen that. Like for example, um, one of my moderators is playing Genshin Impact and I can see it under their name. It says playing Genshin Impact. I don't know. It's very like the voice chats where you can, it's like where you can go in and out of kind of like a party where you can actually speak with voice is very accessible. I mean, it's literally one click you're in and then you can start talking to people and then one click you can come out. No big, like no big deal. There is a very good organization when it comes to discord like some of the um some of the chats we have on the side we have the hangout chat which is like the the main chat um we have where did it go scholarship opportunities we have a workout section for people that you know go to the gym pretty frequently they have a place to meet and talk there we have an art section because some of our students are art i used to be in the culfa i used to be a music major uh talking about music in the art we have a music section too uh that you know for music suggestions people can kind of come in and like see all of these avenues that they can go through which is very exclusive to discord um i mean we could use GroupMe if we wanted to i guess but Discord is really just good. Like we have um, an ability to to what is called pinging people or um, adding somebody, uh, and it allows us to send out an actual like phone notification when we at somebody. Like they can see it pop up on their phone. So for example, we could say like at everyone, put it in the announcements chat so it's not cluttering a different chat, and then uh, put information on the side, and then everybody in the Discord sees it. Like everybody looks at it and like, oh, okay, like, yeah, sure. Um, and then there's also a thing at the very top. It's called of our events, events coordination. We can actually like create events essentially uh, or like reminders for events. People can see it. So for example, we have our second general meeting uh, Tuesday, October 11th at 6 p.m. Uh, and there's two buttons. There's a share button. So you can like share the link or share. I think it's just a link to whoever you want through Discord or through a different application. And then there's another button that says interested. Uh, so you click that and then you can actually like sign up to say like, hey, yeah, I'm going to this. So it's, I mean, it's very well organized. It's super easy to use. I mean, like it's almost, I, it's, it's almost, it's so simple. It's literally so simple. And then, I mean, of course, there's little sections um, that kind of display who you are. Like my name says president. So I'm at the very top uh, and I'm in purple and it says president. And then my officers are pink and they have their name, uh, the game coordinators, moderators, managers, you know, it kind of sections people off based on their interests too. So you can just kind of click on that and be like, oh, well, this person has an interest in this game. And it's, uh, it's just very, it's very well, well organized. It makes, it honestly makes my life so much easier. It really does just on its own. Yeah. So I, you mentioned the the general meeting on October 11th. Um, what would you say to somebody that's maybe, um, you know, interested in, in either a, just kind of casual gaming with friends joining a, the discord or kind of into the more serious kind of um you know competitive gaming and stuff um that's maybe like a little bit ambivalent of you know wanting to come to a meeting or something like that what would you kind of words of encouragement you would give to somebody so um the first thing i will say is our general meetings are a little different than maybe in normal clubs um so like i know that the dance club uh, at utsa they meet like weekly uh, and like they have a comp like a competitive dance team that meets like five week or uh, every two times a week. Sorry. So, but ours are a lot more spaced out. Um, so our first meeting was like at the beginning of September, and now our next meeting is at the beginning middle of October. There's a lot more space in between, but 
what I would give to somebody that's like interested. And of course I've given this pitch a couple of times because we'll stand outside the meeting room and we're holding a big, you know, RRG banner and people will be like, Oh, I see this. It's like, Hey, if you, if you play games, you want to know what's going on. Like this is a place to come figure out. You can, it's, it's a very information driven general meeting. We play a little game every time we have a meeting, a little like trivia game, a little card game. We have some, uh, abilities to provide like drinks uh sometimes um it kind of depends um and maybe some snacks sometimes that's also a little incentive but usually when we talk to people it's like hey you, you play video games like this like this is your place this is where you need to go like we you can come to the general meeting hear about how our teams are doing hear about you know our events that are coming up because we talk about the halloween party or our community nights that happen and people get excited and we can kind of spiel that just a little bit to people we'll be like hey like you need something to do during halloween or you need something to do this friday like this is the place to find out where it's at like this is how you figure out oh you want to play valorant on friday night with a bunch of people go in there that's figure out you know that's how you figure out how to do it and then aside from that there's also some information about like t-shirts or merch that they can purchase and kind of wear around the campus uh that's still representing uh a club at utsa which is roadrunner gaming and then uh, like a lot of the time too is like it doesn't matter you can be doing whatever you are doing be from wherever you are you know you can come in there and be a part of the same group. And that's something that we push forward to a lot of people too, is that like, is that like, it's a, it's a safe space to go in there. That's, I, I think, and I, you know, I mentioned that a lot, but it is, it is the truth that it is a safe space for people to go into. Uh, and, and other than that, there's, you know, other incentives, you know, free water or little snacks, hearing about in, what's going on in the club. It's just, you know, if they're interested and want to know what's going on, that's where they go find out. That about wraps up the questions that I had specifically. Is there any of the last things kind of on the back end that you'd want you'd want to mention? Just for us and for me, you know, like this is a very important thing. I've I've always felt like Roadrunner Gaming is an important thing, an important thing to have on campus for people. One of the things I am proud of is like we're very good at like social events. We're very good at doing people things, you know. Mm -hmm. I, and I mean, don't get me wrong. We have very, very great um, competitive teams, especially like our Rainbow Six team. Mm -hmm. They're very good. But, you know, other than, other than that, I'm just I'm proud of them. I'm proud of our gaming, truthfully. I'm just curious the importance of like a faculty advisor to an organization like this kind of this. Can you explain um, kind of what Brent's role is? Uh, yeah. Operations. Actually, yeah. Um, First of all, I want if if he ever gets the opportunity to read this, I do want to give a shout out to Brent. He is a fantastic human. Uh, if you ever get the chance to meet him, he does things incredibly correct in his role. Uh, he actually has a lot smaller of a role that most people might think he this most student organizations that require a faculty advisor are relatively student run. Um, there are some things, you know, with like administration that we kind of go through him to talk to uh, talk about uh, maybe some guidance. He kind of he kind of acts as like like keeping me straight a lot of times with like with being this president, you know, and so do my officers, of course. Uh, but Brent is really good about that. He's very wise in the words that he says to me. Um, and I think that's just true for a lot of faculty advisors. They're very wise and like kind of guiding and directing their um, organization that they, they advise. So he kind of acts as. I don't know really how to put it, maybe like a father figure of the club or like a brother, like a big brother figure to the club. He just kind of watches out for us, you know. But other than that, we're, we're pretty internally ran. He just kind of hangs out, you know, he's, he's there and, until we need him. Mm -hmm. But he, it, but I, I don't want to like get it twisted. He's still incredibly important and is still very fantastic at what he does. You can read the full story on Roadrunner Gaming in this week's edition of the Paisano linked below. This interview was recorded on September 29th, 2022. Thanks for watching. Click our logo to subscribe or click the videos for more from the Paisano. Leave a comment letting us know your thoughts and what you'd like to see us cover next.